this is uh, Captain Chaudhary. Today I want to speak about severe wind criteria. What was the need of uh, severe wind criteria? I am a feels, everybody feels that the information that is provided by shipyard to the ship is in respect of GZ curve and static sea condition. The criteria also which we satisfy that is the area under the curve up to 30 degrees or angle of flooding should be so much etc. That's also for static sea conditions. So we are dealing all the time with static sea conditions whereas the ship has to face the dynamic sea conditions. Ship has to face waves. So uh, uh, in the future of course it is in the pipeline that IMO decides a few more criteria in respect of the ships so that the ship can withstand the wave so that the ship behaves better in dynamic sea conditions so that the vessel is built in such a way say for example north atlantic winter conditions now this is the first step towards the dynamic sea conditions the severe wind criteria so what is said is this new decked passenger ships and the cargo ships of more than 24 meters in length must satisfy severe wind criteria in addition to the existing criteria which they follow. Say for example, uh, ships which are uh, less than 100 meters, they would follow the existing criteria plus severe wind criteria. Whereas the passenger ships and cargo ships of more than 100 meters, they will satisfy the applicable relevant criteria and severe wind criteria to the satisfaction of administration. So what is the severe wind criteria? Let us look at it. All you have to do is you have to plot a normal GZ curve you have to plot the normal GZ curve and this would be considered as GZ curve on the leeward side. The mirror inverted image can be drawn to a certain extent on the other side. Now uh, this GZ curve which is drawn is uh, a curve of statical stability. Now we have uh, uh, the leeward side GZ curve here, windward side GZ curve over here and uh, for the leeward side or this GZ curve you may say this side is positive and this side is negative whereas for the windward side GZ curve this side is positive and this side is negative. So all we have done is drawn a normal GZ curve on the windward side as well as on the leeward side as well as windward side. Now there is this formula called uh, PAZ upon 1000 G delta and this gives you the steady wind heel lever. That means uh, a force of wind, a pressure because of the wind equal to 504 Newton per meter square is applied and this could be uh, equivalent to a wind force of say 26 uh, meters per second or say about 50 uh, uh, knots of wind that is exposed to the ship and how much the ship because of this wind should uh, heel on one side and the ship looks as if she is permanently listed right so that is called steady wind uh, equilibrium angle and suppose we get LW1 say for example 0.1 meters or something like that so what we do is we measure it on this uh, uh, GZ scale Y axis and draw a horizontal line we don't have to draw the line uh, till very far. We just want this angle where this LW1 uh, horizontal line meets the GZ curve and from there you come down. Now this particular angle is theta 0 that is steady wind uh, heel or equilibrium angle. Now uh, how to get PAZ let us see in a slight more detail. Suppose you have a, a, a ship, this is the water line, this is a, a bulkhead, funnel, etc. Now the exposed lateral area can be found out, it may be given in the ship's particulars, 
or it may be found out uh, from the plan, the side elevation. Uh, we find out this area in meter square, right? And that uh, area is capital A of this formula. P we know is 504 Newton per meter square is Z. What is Z? Suppose this point is the center of windage and this is the center of uh, Boeing C or you can take this point as halfway uh, in the draft underwater. So this particular distance is called Z, the vertical distance. So this is a uh, kind of lever that is caused uh, considering that the wind force is acting at single point. What is the distance from that resisting point or center of buoyancy? So uh, Z is the vertical distance. 1000 GG is 9.81 meter per second square and delta is the displacement in tons. So this is how we get LW1. 1.5 times the LW1 is LW2. 1.5 times LW1 is LW2. When we draw the LW2 line, it's a horizontal line parallel to the x-axis, extend it till the end of the gz curve. This point or this angle is called theta c. Theta c is the second intercept of LW2. Right? Now what is this LW2? LW2 is a gusty wind lever right and it is 1.5 times LW1. Now uh, the ship appears with a 504 uh, Newton per meter square this kind of uh, pressure when it is applied the ship appears to be healed permanently to theta zero. Now this angle should not be more than 16 degrees or 80 percent of deck edge immersion whichever is the small uh, the smaller of the two uh, this angle theta zero which is a steady uh, wind equilibrium angle should not be more than 16 degrees or 80 percent of the deck edge immersion whichever is smaller for example if the deck edge immersion is uh, uh, 16 degrees uh, deck edge immersion is 16 degrees then 80 percent of 16 degrees is uh, 12 degrees so this angle cannot be more than 12 degrees because this angle will influence the heel on the windward side because of the wave action I mean when the vessel is when the vessel is equilibrium at theta zero right and the waves are created that wave will cause the ship to heel on the windward side by an amount equal to theta one as measured from theta zero to the left of it not the y-axis so please remember theta one which we are going to calculate is measured from theta zero to the left of it. You see the intersection of LW2 and GZ curve. This is a pivot point. We extend the LW2 line to the left and this area becomes area A. This becomes area A. Now on the other side, we are going to measure three angles. One is angle of flooding, theta F, we know what is the angle of flooding, then 50 degrees. So uh, theta F, 50 degrees and theta C, which is the second intercept angle, we have to find out whatever is the least of the three. Suppose angle of flooding is 38 degrees, 50 degrees is a standard angle and theta C maybe 71 degrees so least of them is 38 degrees so what we do is at 38 degrees we erect an ordinate and this particular area from the pivot point on the right of it this is called area b so the major criteria is area b is more than or equal to area a area b is the shaded area on the leeward side area a is the shaded area in red on the windward side. So uh, area B should be more than or equal to area A. That is the severe wind criteria. And the minor criteria being the steady wind equilibrium angle should not be more than 16 degrees or 80% of deck edge immersion whichever is smaller. Now talking about theta 1, how do we 
find theta 1. So formula for theta 1 is 109 k x1 x2 under root rs. So how do we find these values? k is dependent on the build scale. If the build scale is absent, you can take the k as 1. But uh, if you want to find out what is the value of k, there is this table that is provided, table 3 that is provided and it is equal to ak into 100 divided by lb. Whereas ak is the lateral area of the bill scale. So when we enter the table with this value, right? When we enter the table with this value, we will get the value of k. This is in table 3 that is provided in the loading and stability manual. Now, x1 depends on molded breadth and depth ratio. For example, if molded breadth upon depth ratio is less than or equal to 2.4, then the value of x1 is equal to 1. Similarly, from the table 2, we find out the value of x2. Say for example, uh, if the ship's block coefficient is more than 0.7, more than or equal to 0.7, then the value of x2 is also 1. The value of s in the formula is found. The value of s in the formula is found out from the table 4. Now, table 4, uh, the value of s depends on the periodic time, time of roll. If the rolling period of the ship is 14 seconds, say for example, as you see from the table 4, you will find the value of factor S equal to 0 0.053. So this is how table 1, 2, 3, 4 are used to find out these things. Now, the other thing which remains is the value of R. What is this value of R? Value of R, let me put it here. Value of R is equal to 0 0.73 plus minus 0 0.6 into OG upon D. So uh, D is the mean draft of the ship. OG is the distance from center of gravity of the ship to the waterline. If the center of gravity is above the waterline, then uh, we have to use plus sign. And if the center of gravity is below waterline, we have to use minus sign. So this is how you will get the value of R. So we have everything that is available from the table 109k x1 x2 and under root rs. Now this value of theta 1 suppose it is 27 degrees and let's say steady wind equilibrium angle is say 7 degrees. So it is 27 from here because theta 1 is 27 but it is 20 from here. So this is how you will satisfy severe wind criteria. This criteria must be satisfied in addition to the normal criteria, normal intact stability criteria that is followed by the ship.